Good evening. I didn't know I came with a harmony. Welcome, one and all, on Ash Wednesday. The beginning of the season of Lent, a time of discipline, a time of focus. Most importantly, a time to remember whose we are. And as we remind ourselves that we are dust and to dust we shall return, we also cling to the promise of the one who brought life to the dust. So welcome, one and all. On this day, uh, beautiful Savior held ashes on the go again on uh, the south side of Ina in front of Fry's. There are 122 people or so, if I kept count, that were involved. Only four of them were church members. We invited people to leave prayers, prayer cards. Some of them are wonderful. Some of them are heartbreaking. We will lift them all later in the service as we remind ourselves that we are all in this together and we are called to love our neighbor as ourselves just as much as we are loved by the one who brought life to us in the dust. I invite you to rise as you're able and join me in Psalm 51. Please respond with the bowl. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. For I know my offenses. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me. <clears throat> Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. <clears throat> Let me hear joy and gladness. Hide your face from my sins. <clears throat> Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. <clears throat> Let me teach your ways to offenders. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation. <clears throat> o Lord, open my lips. <clears throat> For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. <clears throat> the sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us join our hearts in prayer. We pray, gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. The reading is from Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. 
Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? The pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. Well, let me go back a couple of verses. Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Word of God, word of life. Our gospel for this Ash Wednesday comes to us from the sixth chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus is in the midst of the Sermon on the Mount. He's already proclaimed uh, beatitudes and a number of, uh, of different uh, what might be called legal teachings. And now he is turning to how you live in faith and respond in those ways. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your fathers in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. 
Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your fathers in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you. Please be seated. As I stand here in a long robe, liking to be seen on street corners and praying with people, that's not exactly what, what Jesus was talking about. But then again, maybe it was. One of the most common things in Ash Wednesday is people deciding at this point in time, what are they going to give up for Lent? Some of you may have decided. It's almost like New Year's resolutions, right? I'm going to give up something for Lent. It comes from the traditions of fasting. It comes from the traditions of self-sacrifice. It's in a sense, a coming out of, a living out of the deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Now, I don't need anyone to raise hands, but how many of you are planning on giving up something for Lent? And then, why? Wait a minute, Pastor? you're going to read this long invitation to the disciplines of Lent in a little while, and in it you're going to specifically mention fasting, and now you're challenging why. Yes. Because if we paid attention to the lessons from Isaiah to Jesus, you might have caught a thread. of what it's supposed to be like. What is giving something up supposed to be about? Is it so you have an answer to the question if someone comes up to you and says, so, what did you give up for Lent? Truly, I tell you, you have received your reward if you come up with an answer just to answer that question. Is it because you feel you have to, otherwise you haven't checked a box. Truly, I tell you, you have received your reward. Are you doing it because your doctor told you you needed to give something up and you might as well do it for Lent? Truly, I tell you, when you take that blood test and you score better numbers, you have received your reward. I would like to hope that no one here thinks that one of the big reasons why they should do something is because it makes you look awesome to other people. I would hope that the reason why you might choose to do something for Lent was not predicated on the fact that it's going to buff your social image, make you... Well, there's TikTok famous, so does this make you Lent church famous? How many likes are you going to get because you gave up something? It's not about people following you. This whole act, this whole embodiment of any of the things that we're supposed to do now are about following him. That's why we do it. But then, how does any of this help us follow him? I'll give you a hint. If you give up something you really, really like, and come three weeks from now, you are a miserable person to be around because 
you want your chocolate badly, or you gave up coffee, and you're one of those people that is not socially acceptable until you've had your cup of coffee, or any of the other possible things that within a certain time frame, you're not someone to be around, truly I tell you, you've received a reward. And the reward is everybody else is going to steer clear of you. Do not look dismal. Do not put... These things are not to be self-destructive. But pastor, we're to take up our cross and follow him. Yes. So how many of you on Good Friday are volunteering to see how good you look on wood? No? No takers? Come on, it's light work. Just hold out your hands. The nails will do the rest. No? Then the issue is that we shouldn't be trying to pretend. And when Jesus calls us to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow, it's not about us trying to become secondary Jesuses. But it is about us learning in the discipline of Lent, the discipline of discipleship that means that should go beyond anything that just happens for 40 days. What it means to have a Savior. Which means you didn't do it. But also we call him Lord. Very rarely do we just say Savior. We normally call Lord and Savior. And a Lord leads. A Lord commands. What does he command us to do? Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the peacemakers. What are we supposed to do? We're to be those things. And we're to be blessings to those people in those situations. Because our life of faith, uh, our following of Jesus, if there's one thing we need to take from it, is that deny yourself part, which is probably the single hardest thing for Western individualistic Americans to even consider. Because we spend our entire life being told, look out for number one. You must t pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. You've got to take care of your own business. You've got to go and you've got to do and you've got to and you've got to and you've got to. You've got to climb that ladder. You've got to run that race. You've got to achieve. What did you do today with the subtext of did you spend the day in a worthwhile fashion? Well, I denied myself. What does that mean? Again, why? You denied yourself. Good. So what? Why did Jesus deny himself? Do we honestly think that on Good Friday, the Son of God couldn't just pull himself off the cross and say, I've done my part. I've done enough. Or, you know, all you people who are down there mocking me and my close friends who abandoned me and one of them who betrayed me, this ain't worth it. What's in it for me? He denied himself, why? For you. For the world. Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. Yes, even to the people who were abusing him. 
So I invite you in this season of Lent, if you're going to find something to give up, maybe there's a whole bunch of things you need to give up that affects how you are for someone else. It might be prejudice and assumptions. It might be past pain and grudges. It might be the fact that sometimes you keep saying, I would like to help such and such, but I can't. And ask yourself, why? And is it because of a choice? And if so, what was behind that choice? How are we going to deny ourselves? Take up a cross and follow. How are we going to learn The Christian faith is not about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about, for God so loved the world, he gave his son. And that means you. And what it means in this season of Lent is a reminder of those promises and gifts in baptism and the challenge that's given to us in baptism to let your light so shine before others they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Again, why are you doing those good works? For other people. To be praised by them? No, to glorify your Father in heaven. Deny yourself. But that's tough, isn't it? Again, partially because of how we're raised partially because of how we're hardwired. Again, thank God for a Savior. But may we find the way, the will, the strength to follow in a world that needs pacemakers more than ever. In a world that needs the meek not to be downtrodden and people not to be oppressed. And I don't think ever there's ever a time in life where mourning is fun. Or something you want to do. May we bless others through the blessing of that we have. May this time of Lent be an opportunity for us to realize just how blessed we are because we have a Savior. We know how the story ends. This is not about achieving the end. This is about sharing the good news that is already there. It's about your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. For all of us, we gather to remind ourselves of that which is already known, the love of God in Jesus Christ. May this season of Lent be a time to deepen that connection, to reflect on it, to maybe, in a sense, take it out for a spin, maybe simply dust it off. But to follow our Savior and Lord so that others may see that light and glorify our Father in heaven. And so the final challenge I put to you all is not so much a challenge. It's a reminder. I invite you to remind yourself of the promises God gave you in baptism. If you repeat after me, please. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. I've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's 
inheritors of the kingdom of God, blessed by the Holy Spirit and marked with that cross. May we go forward in a love that cannot be ended, a life that will become anew, following the one who redeems the world, the one who brought life to dust and who can bring life to you. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, 
strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. As we come to the confession of sin, I know we do not have kneelers in the pews. If you wish to kneel, if you wish to stand, if you wish to sit for the confession, please do so. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. <clears throat> we sh have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. As we come to the time of the imposition of ashes, following the prayer, you'll be invited to come down the center aisle and uh, receive ashes um, and returned to your seat. If you wish, along the way, there are two prayer stations, one to either side. If you'd like to light a candle and spend a little bit of time in prayer as we're doing the imposition, you can also do that during communion as well. We pray, Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
with all that I did that with on the roadside, I added in one other piece, which we do in a little bit later. But I would say, remember your dust, and to dust you shall return. Peace be with you. For all and each and every one of us, I would pray that the reminder that we are dust, and to dust we shall return, can fill us with peace. A peace of reality that reminds us we're not God. But also a reminder of the one who brought life to dust. That can bring life to us. Even in those circumstances and those situations where you think it's nothing but dust. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of our salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all. Almighty God, have mercy on us and forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Given the fact that there is such a large number of prayers, I invite the congregation to be seated. And as we go through, what will happen is we will read through a series of, I will read through a series of the prayers I collected. And then I will cue the response, O Lord, hear our prayer, and you sing the response. And so as we prepare our hearts for prayer, O Lord, hear our prayer. For my family to find peace and love within, especially with difficult relationships. For Joey, that he will stay healthy. For Kim Nash, who died of cancer and whose friend misses her terribly. For the Ukraine. O Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. For Amanda, and her family, especially her daughter that is having a baby in June, her first. For Higinio, Higinio Jr., for Adam, for Jose, the Lord, you know what they need. For all the joys and concerns that we cannot find words for. For Jessica's family, for Reuben, her son, as he is going through a very tough time. He's a teen boy. For Jorge and his family and his prayers to stop the war in the Ukraine. O Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom.
prayers for my family, for better living situations, for myself and my children, prayers for Erica, for Cindy, who is mourning her husband's Herman, her husband, Herman, who passed away recently. Prayers for healing from COVID, for all of the effects that he continues to feel, for family and friends, for all who are struggling, especially for those who have no home. For all marriages to be strengthened, for Bill's family. Prayers for Cody and Allison and the birth of a healthy child. For Kate and their daughter Alessia. Lord, you know what they need. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. for world peace, for Arnie, for strength as he moves on after the death of his wife, for Alicia, for health, and for comfort as her husband died just a month ago, for Michael, Sean, Daniel, and Ezekiel, grandchildren that are being adopted and prayers for Abby in treatment for good health and safety for Cornelius whose mom and dad passed away in the same week and he was not able to go Prayers for healing in the family between a mother and daughter-in-law. Prayers for Christine. From Marta, she is thankful for her two daughters and her one son and all that they have accomplished. And from Maria, for protection for her kids who live 2,000 miles from mom. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Jordan in the Air Force, prayers of safety and for their daughter Savannah, as well as prayers of pride from a mom who is proud of her kids. For John battling pancreatic cancer, He confessed that to me right after I said, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. For Michael, for healing. For Emily, who's in a bad situation. Protection, safety, strength, redemption. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. For 
for peace in Ukraine. <clears throat> Prayers for the daughter of Paul Herrera. She misses him terribly, but glad that he's now in heaven and finally at peace. A prayer of thanksgiving of Annalise for five healthy boys, no matter how much they wanted a girl, and the celebration that all five boys will be baptized next week. For Serena, a young lady who's trying to make her way in the world in her very troubled car. A prayer of thankfulness for being blessed with the basics. For Francisco and his daughter, America, for health and healing. A thanksgiving for the life of Charlotte and a prayer of Laura, just grateful for being blessed. For Darlene's kids, grandkids, great grandkids, that they stay well. Simple prayer for health and safety. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. family and friends of John Medina who passed away last week. A prayer of thankfulness for the kids and the grandkids that are around. A simple thank you for all of God's blessings. For the people of Ukraine and all those in most need of God's mercy. Please lift up my son. John, to leave the drugs and be a lovable, strong young man again. In Jesus' name, I ask for guidance. A very worried mom. A joyous birthday for Edgar on Saturday. A prayer for Mar Marilyn, mourning the death of her son, Brett. O oh Lord, Hear our prayer. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. For all the prayers that were unable to be spoken for the joys and the concerns for all of the weight that may still be on people's hearts and minds we ask dear Lord for your release for your comfort for your grace and mercy And may we know our neighbors, and may we know ourselves as you know us, so that we may be loved and loving, blessed and blessing, freed because we denied and let go and took up your cross of love for us, for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Please, now and going forward, 
find some ways of sharing the peace of Christ with one another in the world. Um, the offering plates are in the narthex in the gathering area if you wish to leave something there. There are electronic giving options on our website. Yes, you can still mail checks. Um, there's also, for those of you who are unfamiliar or visiting with us today, um, there is also a coffee can out there labeled Cup of Cold Water. That is our um, local benevolence for emergency needs that kind of that present themselves as they come. Um, there was a number of people who were participating, who participated in our Ashes on the Go, who gave, and it, they were like, well, do we have to pay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please make out the check to D-A-V-I-D-P-A-V. But in all seriousness, they did give, and that money will, all of that money will go to the cup of cold water. It is only fitting that our neighbors remind us that we care for our neighbors. Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you set a table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ now and forever. Amen. Now for all of us who are gathered in this space, uh, it's quite simple. You will be directed to come down the center aisle, extend your hand, um, a wafer will be placed in it. If you need gluten-free wafers, we do have them. Just please let me know as you come forward. And then you turn to either side um, there will be a communion assistant who will put out a cup of grape juice or a cup of wine for you. You know, please take. And the, you will see off to the side, there's little, there's little stands with bowls to put the empty cups in. Again, if you did not take advantage of it earlier and wish to now or wish to again, there are prayer stations to either side of the sanctuary. For those of you joining us online, welcome. Simple plate, simple cup, bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, simple things. When we come to that great celebration of Monday Thursday, we realize that Jesus sat at a banquet table for a major holiday, and he took the simple staples off of it to remind us of his presence. To remind us of the amazing things he can do with simple things. Like us. And so, we give you thanks, Almighty God, for breathing life into the dust for creating life out of nothingness and for sustaining it, restoring it, 
for the gifts of your prophets who called us to remember that life was to be lived with and of others, for the gift of your Son who embodied the word and the teachings of the law that reminded us to love our neighbor as ourselves, for the one who modeled what service and sacrifice is, the one who is our Savior. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So may we receive what you denied yourself. May we receive the gift of of you taking the cross. May we receive your grace and mercy and love. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we receive that gift of new life. May we rise in newness of life and go forth proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's love is poured out in Christ for you. Open yourselves to receive it.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. We thank you, living God, for the body and blood of your Son, which sustains us in the wilderness and the garden alike. As Christ has loved us in this feast, so send us to love Christ in our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.